hey, my CPU design is fully complete. Now, this doesn't mean my physical CPU is complete, only the ALU, a few registers, and a few other components are done. But I figured I would go ahead and explain how everything's going to work before I actually build the thing, because building it will be a huge video on its own. So I do want to quickly discuss what the next few videos will be on this channel. The next video will be the assembly and the testing of the CPU. It should be a pretty big one. After that, I will make an assembler. I'm actually really excited about the assembler, and I cannot wait. Wait a minute, I hear something. Oh, PCB. What? All PCB. Oh yeah, I wanted to share a word from this video sponsor, All PCB. If you need a PCB product, All PCB is running a limited time promotion right now that is available for everyone. If you haven't ordered from All PCB, with your very first order, you can get your PCB for only one dollar, which can include free shipping worldwide if your calculated shipping is thirty dollars or less. If you already have an account with All PCB, there's an option for you as well. For every new user that you invite, when they place their first order, you will get a $30 coupon. The amazing news is that the new user is eligible for the first dollar PCB order. They get a $1 PCB with free shipping and you get a $30 coupon for your next order. It is a win-win. You can refer up to 10 people for a total of $380. If you're interested in these big savings, I highly suggest that you check out the links in the description below. Thank you again All PCB, for sponsoring this video. All right, let's get back to the video. Let's start off by looking at what makes up my CPU. There's gonna be a lot here, so if there's something that you would like cleared up or need a more in-depth explanation for, let me know in the comment section so I can include that in my next CPU video. Let's start off with the largest and most important component, the arithmetic logic unit. As the name states, it just does the math and the logic. My ALU has six instruction bits, which can tell it what to do with two number inputs. I'll go ahead and put up on the screen what each bit does. Using a combination of these bits, we can do things such as x plus y, x minus y, and y minus x, or even things such as setting the output to a one or a zero. Then we can also do the logic comparisons such as x and y, and x or y. I find the ALU to be the most fascinating component. Next, we have our registers. Registers hold one number for immediate use. My CPU will have three registers total, register A, register D, and register M. Each register does something specific for my CPU. So let's start with register A. Register A is the busiest register. When we have an A instruction, that number will load directly into the A register. The A register is also in charge of selecting which RAM address that we'd like to get the data from, and it also handles jump conditions. Next, we have the D register. D is pretty simple. It holds a number so that we can do math with it. That's pretty much it. Lastly, the M register. This register just loads the data from a selected RAM address, and that's pretty much it. Next, we have the program counter. Simply, it just tells us what line in the program we'd like to read. The final component of the CPU would be the control logic. As shown on the screen, it accepts 16 bits of data using many rudimentary logic gates, we can decode this instruction input and have it apply to the CPU. This is kinda the most complicated part. So now that you know what components are in my CPU, let's dive a little deeper into the instructions that it will be accepting. A program on my computer will look something like this. This may look really intimidating, but by the end of this, you should be able to sort of understand it. Something to note right now is that each line is known as an instruction. The CPU only deals with one instruction at a time, then it moves on to the next. Let's start off with something simple, types of instructions. My CPU only has two types of instructions, an A instruction and a C instruction. First, to define whether my CPU is going to have an A instruction or a C instruction, we must look at the most significant bit. If this is a one, then we are dealing with a C instruction. If it is a zero, then we have an A instruction. In this case of my CPU, an A instruction is kind of the most simple thing. All I am doing is telling the CPU that I want to load the instruction as a binary number into the A register minus the most significant bit. This will be an unsigned 15-bit number, which gives us a range of 0 to 32,767. Now, let's look at C instructions. As discussed, C instructions start with a 1. Now, depending on what bits I have enabled, this tells our CPU what we'd like to do with some numbers. Let's start by moving from the most significant bit to the least significant bit. Alright, so bit 15. 
This is our instruction bit, zero being an A instruction, one being a C instruction. Now, bit 14 and 13. Both of these bits don't do anything, so we'll mark them as an X. I have some potential plans for these in the future, but we'll see. Bit 12. This is my A bit. This determines whether I want to access my A register or the M register on the ALU. The next six bits are the ALU instructions. We discussed these earlier, but I will quickly say what each bit is assigned. Bit 11 is the ALU ZX pin. Bit 10 is the ALU NX pin. The bit 9 is ALU ZY. Bit 8 is ALU NY. Bit 7 is ALU F. And bit 6 is ALU NO. The next three bits are for storing outputs at specific registers. So bit 5 is for the A register, bit 4 is for the D register, and bit 3 is for the M register. The last three bits are for jump conditions. Jumps play a vital role in computer architecture. This allows us to jump to another location in our program. This is actually how classic loops, if statements, and functions work in normal programs. So bit 2 is the JLT, bit 1 is JEQ, and bit 0 is JGT. Using a combination of these jump commands, we can get jump commands such as is greater than zero, is less than zero, is equal to zero, or just jump. All right, so let's look at an instruction slash line of code. Here we have a bunch of zeros and at the end is one zero one zero. This is easy. Remember the most significant bit is what we look at first. In this case, it is a zero. So this just means we want to store this number at the A register, in this case, 1010 is 10 in decimal. Pseudocode for this instruction can look something like A equals 10. Let's look at a more difficult one. 1110111110000000. Hopefully I said that correctly. So the first bit is a 1. We know that we are dealing with a C instruction in this case. So that means our CPU is going to be moving something around. We know that bit 14 and 13 are useless, so we can go ahead and ignore these. Bit 12 is the A bit. In this case, it is zero, so we're doing math with A and D registers. If it was a one, then we would do math with the M and D register. The next six bits tell us what the ALU needs to do. The first two bits are on, so this means that the X, which is the D register, is getting overwritten to be all ones. The next two bits handle the Y input. We have a zero and a one. So this means we're reading the Y input, but we're also inverting it. So right now this looks totally crazy. The last two bits are on as well. So the first bit determines whether we are comparing or doing math. Since this bit is on, that means we're going to add these two numbers together. The last bit is on as well. This means we're going to invert the output just one more time. Input into the ALU was X and 10. The output is 11. It looks like we just did A plus 1. Out of the last six bits in the instruction, only one is on, so we just look at that one. This one is bit four. Bit four is write to D register. So this means we want to write the output of the ALU to the D register. The instructions above translated to pseudocode look something like this. A equals 10 and D equals A plus one. That was a lot, but hopefully you can somewhat understand this. Once my CPU is completed, I would love for you all to be able to send me your code so I can run it on my own CPU. Let's look at the CPU running a few programs. This first program is just a test of the A and D register. We want to make sure that each register is loading data properly. Data goes from the A register and loads directly into the D register. That is it. The next program is a simple loop. It never ends, but it does count. I even included increments, so we can count in twos, threes, fives, you name it. This last program tests our read and write with RAM. This is what I struggled to create for the longest time. I do not want to bore you with the details, but thank you to this Hackaday post. You saved me countless hours of figuring this issue out. Anyway, this program here counts from zero all the way to 15, consistently reading and loading values from memory. Once it is done, the D register is loaded with 0101, just so you can see something visual that is complete. Well, that is it for this video. I know it is a shorter one, but only because the next video will be pretty huge. I hope that you all enjoy the video. I will see you all in the next one. Bye!